Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about physical versus chemical changes. So what are physical changes? Well, it says right here that physical changes are changes in a substance that do not involve a change in the identity or chemical makeup of that substance. So let's take a look at a few examples here down below. Let's suppose we have some peanuts and what we're going to do is we're going to grind these peanuts down to make peanut butter. We still have uh, peanuts here and we still have peanuts here. It's just taken on a different physical form. So this is going to be a physical change. This would be an example of a physical change right here, grinding peanuts into peanut butter. Let's take a look at this piece of paper right here. If we fold this piece of paper up to make a paper airplane, this would be an example of a a physical change. We're not changing the chemical makeup of the paper, we're simply changing its physical appearance. Over here, if we take a look at this copper bar right here, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up turning this into copper wire. And anytime you can take a metal and turn it into wire, that, uh, uh, that, that shows that, that that metal is ductile. Okay, ductile is the process, or ductility is the process of turning uh, a metal into wire. So we still have copper here and it's still copper here. It's just taken on a different physical form. Let's take a look right here. We have ice which we know is H2O. That's water in the solid stage or state and what we're going to do with this ice is we're going to melt it down into liquid water so it's still H2O here. We did not change the chemical makeup of this. Uh, we just changed the physical appearance. So this too would be a physical change. All right, so once again, changes in a substance that do not involve a change in the identity or chemical makeup of that substance are physical changes. And it's important to keep in mind, and this is very important, that all changes in state of matter are going to be physical changes. So anytime you go from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or gas to liquid and liquid back to solid, it's going to be a physical change, just like the ice melting over here. That is going to be a physical change. All right. Lastly, it says all physical changes are not necessarily accompanied by a chemical change. And we'll talk about chemical changes in a second. But understand that when we when we take these peanuts and make peanut butter out of it, we're not changing the chemical composition. OK, this is only going to be a physical change. Same right here. Same thing right here and same thing right here. OK, so now let's take a look at chemical changes. OK, it says right here. That chemical changes are changes in a substance that do involve a change in the identity or chemical makeup of that substance. So if we take a look here, if we have some sugar here and we end up making some type of alcohol over here, that process is called fermentation. Fermentation is the process of turning sugar into alcohol. So we have sugar over here, which is one type of compound, and we have alcohol over here, which is a totally different substance. And so that is going to be a chemical change. Another example right here, if we have an iron nail and we leave it out uh, on the grass overnight, uh, it might turn into this rusty nail over time, right? That process is called oxidation, right? Uh, the iron nail here, the iron is combining with oxygen to produce uh, some iron oxide or rust over here. That is going to be a chemical change. The chemical composition of this nail now is different than, when we, than what we started with. If we take a look right here, we have some logs here. And if we light these logs on fire, like we see right here, this will be an example of a, a chemical change, right? This is going to be a chemical change. Anytime we burn something or anytime there's some sort of combustion going on, that's going to be a chemical change. We're changing the chemical composition of these, uh, of these logs. If we take a look right here, if we take some water, which is uh, made up of two hydrogens bonded to one oxygen, and we pass an electric current through it, what ends up happening is the hydrogen and uh, the hydrogens break free from the oxygens and end up producing hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, so we have one substance over here, which is water, and we have two brand new substances over here, which is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and this too would be an example of a chemical change. Okay, so one last thing that you need to keep in mind, and this is very important as well, it says right here that all chemical changes are accompanied by physical changes. So primarily, all of these are going to be examples of chemical changes, but there's a physical change also. If you take a look, there's a physical change in the appearance here. There's a physical change in the appearance of these logs. There's a physical uh, change in the appearance of the iron nail. There's a physical change in the appearance of this water. So all chemical changes are accompanied by a uh, uh, physical change, but the opposite is not true. 
not all physical changes are accompanied by chemical changes. Okay, so here are some examples of physical and chemical changes. Let's now take a look at a few more and see if you can determine which is which. Okay, so let's just quickly go through each one of these examples here. And what we need to do is determine if it is a physical or a chemical change. And once again, we will assume that all chemical changes are also physical changes. So right here, if we have condensing water vapor, so that's water vapor that is turning back to a liquid, that is a change in state of matter, that will always be a physical change. Let's look at this next one, the combustion of gasoline. Okay, so when gas gasoline catches on fire, what's happening is that there's a chemical change going on. That gasoline is being converted into something else or something totally different. So this will be an example of a chemical change. Let's look at this next one, turning water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. We just talked about electrolysis, and anytime you're turning one thing or one chemical into two different chemicals or one substance into two different substances, that's going to be a chemical change as well. Let's look at this one, milk souring. So over time, what happens is that milk is breaking down and it's being converted into different substances, so that's going to be a chemical change. Let's look at this one, the sublimation of dry ice. So sublimation, that's the process of going from a solid directly to a gas without passing the liquid stage first. And in a different video, we talked about that. So that's going to be a change in state of matter, and that's going to be a physical change. Remember, all changes in states of matter are always physical changes. What about turning copper into wire? Turning copper into wire, it's still going to be copper. It just has a different physical form. So that is a physical change as well. Let's look at this one, the fermentation of sugar into alcohol. We talked about this uh, a few moments ago. We are turning sugar into something totally different. We're turning one chemical substance into a different chemical substance. So that will be a chemical change. And last but not least, we have evaporating water. Evaporating tells you that that liquid is turning into a gas, in this case water vapor. So that is going to be a change in state of matter. And all changes in state of matter are physical changes. Okay, so that's physical and chemical changes in a nutshell. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you, and I hope this was helpful.